This video is sponsored by Liquid IV. I'm on the Appalachian Trail right now. That is creepy sounding. Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and let me tell you what the current situation is. I am right now sitting in the Green Mountain National Forest in the lovely state of Vermont. It's mid-November. It's about 38 degrees outside, and I have three days off, and me and you, we're about to do three days of backpacking, hammock camping, and uh, the great outdoors. So let's hop out here, check out our surroundings. I'm at the end of Rootville Road, right outside of Manchester, Vermont. Um, it's a little dirt road here, and it terminates here by this uh, water reservoir or tower, whatever you want to call it. I got my backpack here. If you're familiar with backpacking and ultralight backpacking, I would say I am just barely on the cusp of ultralight for this trip. My base weight is about 10 pounds, which would be all my gear except for food and water. For this trip, I threw in, because of the temperatures and the threat of rain and snow, I threw in uh, some heavier clothing in the pack there, a hat, gloves. So we'll get into all that later. But right now, I just want to get this pack out of the vehicle. Put that right there. Pop the door shut. and lock her up all right let's do this always a shock of reality when you put that pack on and realize you're walking with your old home and shelter and food and all that for the next few days doesn't feel too bad but we'll see um it is right now what a lot of people would say is winter conditions. 30-ish uh, degrees, possibly going down to the 20-ish degree mark over the course of the trip. And some rain and snow, depending on those temperature fluctuations. My wife and I are actually staying uh, about two hours away from here for the week in Lake George over the line in New York. So I've been here a couple days already and I packed all my stuff and I said, I'll just figure out a trip when I get here. Um, and then when I got here with my <laughs> minimalist ultralight gear, I realized, yeah, there's like snow on the ground up there and it's going to be pretty cold. So we'll see. I'm going to use my rain gear for extra warmth. Um, I have a puffy jacket in there and some long underwear that I'm saving for camp. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. So I believe the trailhead is over here. All right, here we go. So what I'm going to do here is take an old uh, forest road, or maybe it's an ATV trail, but we're going to use it to link up with something you may have heard of, the Appalachian Trail. And around these parts, it's also simultaneously the Vermont Long Trail, which is kind of a mini version of the Appalachian Trail. It's got shelters along it, much like the Appalachian Trail, and it runs the entire length of the state of Vermont. And it's such a nice trail that in a lot of places, the Appalachian Trail just follows the Long Trail. And uh, the AT is, you know, the one that runs several thousand miles from Maine all the way to Georgia. But we won't be doing that on this trip. We'll just use a little portion of it and create a loop we're going to see some ponds some mountains 
maybe even an old fire tower built in the 30s that we will use to get a nice view of the surrounding Green Mountains as well as the Tacomic Range which is nearby let's see we got a board right here with a little information welcome Rootville Road Prospect Rock Trail okay leave no trace and welcome to the National Forest no permit or any uh, red tape really required to park and camp overnight here which is nice picking up some snow as we go ferns are still alive and kicking though so we're not that deep into it apparently and the aforementioned prospect rock will be up ahead here within I don't know a mile mile and a half that'll give us some good views and a little pit stop ultimately the goal for today is to get to Stratton Pond so we're kind of doing a lollipop and that is when you have a loop but it requires an out and back on the way in and out to get to said loop in this case it's this logging road right here then we'll get to the interior loop at the apex of that loop is stratton pond and stratton pond it should be about eight miles total from the jeep and 2,000 feet of elevation gain the main challenge for us <laughs> is the fact that i mentioned i came here with my wife and i drove two hours to get here i had some things to do this morning wanted to make sure that she was set up properly before i left with our only means of transportation as well so it is after 11 o'clock right now and sunset even though we can't see the sun somewhere in there sunset is 4 30. i've got <laughs> about four and a half hours until sunset and then tomorrow depending on the weather because tomorrow is the heaviest possibility of uh, rain and high winds but if all goes well from stratton pond i can do about a seven or eight mile out and back to the peak of stratton mountain that has that old fire tower which you're allowed to climb up into and it actually legend says inspired the creators of the appalachian trail and the long trail to well make the appalachian trail and the long trail so anyway up ahead here should be our first view and uh maybe we'll get a little inspiration keep on plugging along look at that that is a white blaze and that means one thing at least on the east coast Appalachian Trail I think I see a clearing through the trees it's like a little worn down through this snow I think the snow just made it a little hard to follow let's take a look probably time for a little snack break and some hydration too but might as well do that with a view there you go geological survey benchmark when's it from 1942 all right well that means we must be somewhere although i guess you're always somewhere but wow you hear that water rushing jeez 
Now that there should be, no wait, I'm gonna say it's that, highest point on the Taconic Range that I was talking about earlier is Equinox Mountain. I'm gonna say that's it. Looks a little higher than that. Whew, there was a cool breeze here. But I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop, take a little break. Tell you what, it is getting chilly. So, I'm gonna put on, at least just for now, my ultralight rain jacket, which honestly, if I had planned <laughs> properly for pure winter, or proper winter, I probably would have went with something a little heavier but more substantial um this jacket's awesome but not not any pockets on it or anything except for this vest pocket um and you know it's lightweight so you don't want to beat it up too much but it gets the job done it'll cut the wind it'll trap heat it'll keep me warm i'm gonna have a snack right now and some hydration and i think i'll go hydration first now a lot of you might be thinking you just said you were freezing um and uh why would you be thinking about water first do i feel thirsty right now no i don't but if you're new to backpacking like i was at some point and still act like i am <laughs> quite often um, you may only associate dehydration with sweating or hot weather activities or being hot, um, stuff like that. What you may not realize though is, um, a lot of times I would get back from winter trips and I would be beet red. I thought it was like tree allergies or something. Um, I'd be beet red, lethargic, just all messed up. And it took me not not happy to admit it but it took me years to realize that um i was because it was cold assuming that um i was hydrated because i didn't feel hot and i wasn't sweating a whole ton and i was legitimately though getting dehydrated so i do believe it's time to take care of that before we venture on i'd like to thank my sponsor for this video liquid iv and I have some right here and I'm about to use some. So you may have heard of Liquid IV before. I got a packet right here. Uh, basically, they are all about hydration. Hydration multiplier. They got a little something called CTT. That's cellular transport technology if you don't know what that means. But basically, one of these little guys right here will hydrate you faster and more efficiently than water alone. This is their original formula, I believe. It's a lemon lime. But recently, they've come out with a new version that I've actually come to like. It's tangerine flavored, but more importantly, it is their Hydration Multiplier Plus Immune Support. This adds the benefits I was just talking about, electrolytes, hydration, etc. But you also get immune support from vitamin C, zinc, as well as Wellmune that helps strengthen the immune system and supports overall physical health. All of which are things that I definitely need on this trip. So I'm gonna take one of these packets. I'm gonna go with the immune strength one because my wife, before I left, was feeling a little under the weather. So I actually left her like six, maybe eight of these until I get back. And I uh, am going to have some as well, just in case. But it'll also give me the hydration that I need, as well as replace the uh, electrolytes that I'm burning as I go throughout this trip. And hopefully get to the top of this mountain and down to this lake. And that sun is taunting me still. But anyway, one thing at a time. And one of these packets is formulated for 16 ounces. 
of water. So I'll just pop that in there. Easy. Shake it up. Not trying to be dramatic. I think there's a bear down there. There was again. But here's what's crazy. I feel like it, I hear like a dog collar on it. I wonder if it's a hunting dog that's lost. There's no trail down there. And there's no human talking. Very strange. I have no idea. But I know even though I'm very concerned about this potential bear over here, your main concern is probably where can I get liquid IV? And I will tell you, there's a link in my video description. You can go there and you can use the special code syntax 77 and you can get 25% off. Hit that up. Or you could always go to Walmart. It is available nationwide at your neighborhood Walmart. I don't get it. All right. Anyway, I'm going to eat my peanuts and then I will head towards the sun into the snow. And boy, oh boy, we got some miles to make up before that thing sinks into the horizon. Man, it's cold. All right, let's go. All right, leaving the road behind. That is it. This will begin our loop. AT, LT, south. We're gonna head this way. All right, Green Mountain National Forest. We're here, the split, the top of our loop. So if all goes well, we'll come back from over there. That is Branch Pond, Douglas Shelter, and Bourne Pond, which is beautiful down there. But we will continue on the Long Trail, Appalachian Trail South, through the mud, through the water, through the snow, through the muck. We'll try to stay dry. Try to stay warm. Thankfully, these uh, sections that are real bad, they put down these wooden passages. Right now, kind of feels like spring with snow. Mud and frozen stuff. It's quiet though. That snow around deadens the sound. The occasional clump of snow coming off the tree. Snow is increasing. Although from those dots, you can tell it's been raining on and off as well. Snow, I'm okay with that. Rain, no. It's getting a little blue. The sky, that is. late. Goodbye, son. All 
All right. Well, it's well after dark. I think you can probably tell that. Um, I was gonna talk about it later, but I'm wearing for nostalgia purposes, my old boots from the first time I hiked in Vermont. They've worked well, but I think they finally failed, both of them. Um, all that deep mud covered in snow, I think finally broke them. And I can feel water sloshing around in both boots. Uh, luckily, because I'm moving, uh, it doesn't feel too bad. It feels cold, but it's not terrible. It's probably in the, it's gotta be low 30s right now. It feels like potentially high 20s, but I, I really don't have any way of knowing. But the point is, my feet <laughs> are wet. I have spare socks and sock liners in my uh, uh, backpack. But what I'm thinking is this. I was headed to, am headed to, uh, Stratton Pond. That has a tent site. But a half mile further uh, down the side of Stratton Pond is Stratton Pond Shelter. And it, it, I say shelter, but Normally that means like a lean-to with the open face front. This thing looks pretty serious. You do pay a caretaker for that one as well. In November, I don't know if anybody's gonna be there. But I'm thinking my goal is, even if anybody else is already there, um, I'm gonna shoot for the shelter. So maybe I can light up a fire and uh, dry these boots out and just get my morale up i don't know we're gonna check it out if nobody's there i'm hanging my hammock up inside um i'm i'm, I'm fine with that that is where the adventure has taken us it's well after dark which isn't saying much this time of year but we're just going to push forward and Let's see if we can't get a little wooden shelter activity. We'll see. sign says the shelter is up here so let's see what we got alright I think we are Only ones here. Let's take a look. Some benches. All right. It's an A frame. There's a rock or two. Well, there's no indoor fireplace, but it is cut off from the wind. So I'm gonna take it. And actually there's a little loft area up these stairs. That's probably the best spot for, let's take a look. Oh yeah, 
it's the best spot out of the wind. So I'll probably find a way to put my hammock up there. But first things first, drop this pack and uh, make some food and um, get some sleep. And we'll see what happens in the morning. We'll take it from there. Right now, beef stew, hit the hay. on is putting wet boots on when it's 30 degrees. This is gonna hurt but there's nothing else I can do. It's gonna be a painful 30 minutes or so. Whew, they are soggy but uh, after that they will warm up. That's what they're built to do. I mean they were also built to stay dry, but they're 10 years old, so what are you going to do? But the synthetic materials... Oh, God. <laughs> Just got to trust. They'll do the, do the job and wick away moisture and keep my feet dry, but... Oh, my God, that's painful. <sighs> oh, boy. Yeah, they completely failed. I haven't used these boots in a while. Although my friend James did, I lent, I lent him these same boots less than a year ago. And he did just fine in like a foot and a half of snow down in West Virginia. But I think the difference is that was straight powder. And last night I was mucking around a lot of times up to my ankle in straight water or mud and it was just too much but anyway as you can see there's plenty of mud and sludge around here it's pretty impressive though stratton pond shelter picnic bench out front up that ladder right there and kind of level with the sign and that vent is the third story where I am. I'll show you in a little bit. It's still pretty dark in there, so you can't see too much. The wash pit, oh, right there. For doing your dishes. And there's our frenemy, the sun. He brings warmth, but he goes away quick. And up here, I believe, should be a privy. sunshine in here than the uh the bunk i got over there catch you in a minute or five
Boy, that's hot. Making a little bit of a power move slash risky decision right now. <clears throat> this is actually slated to be my dinner tonight. But I want to get a good run at this fire tower that inspired the Appalachian Trail on Stratton Mountain. And based on last night, it was pretty sloggy and muddy. Definitely slowed me down a bit. So I'm going to eat what should be dinner right now to get some calories in me. It's a uh, chicken stir fry. It's got a little bit of peas, carrots, rice, uh, fried eggs, which or scrambled eggs, I should say, cubes, which I'm not usually a fan of, but it'll be fine. So, seal that up and let it sit, I don't know, 10 minutes or 15 or whatever it takes. And then tonight, I'll have these loaded baked potato mashed potatoes. These are the ones that don't require any milk or butter, just hot water. I got some brown gravy as well. So between the two, four servings times 110. So we got 440 calories plus uh, four times 20, 80. Okay, so we're pushing like 500 calories, 500 plus calories on that. And my dinner tonight would have been 600. So it's pretty similar, uh, believe it or not. This cost uh, 12 bucks and this together cost um, probably three bucks at the Walmart by Lake George so something to keep in mind when you're backpacking I love doing the freeze-dried meals they really do add uh, just something nice to the trip but if you're just trying to get calories ramen noodles mashed potatoes nor sides can't go wrong. So, I'll eat the good stuff now and save the potatoes for later. All right. It's still pretty dark up here. There's the hammock and my side wonder under quilt. It's actually uh, synthetic. It's still pretty light and it is a combination under quilt protector so ironically I brought this because if there was splashback from the rain and whatnot um, an under quilt protector helps protect your insulation from water and wind and in the case of the sidewinder it is built into an actual underquilt rated to 30 degrees I believe this one is felt pretty good last night but I'm gonna leave that up I'm gonna take the rain jacket because just might get that I'll leave the tarp here and I'll bring the first aid not to jinx myself but we'll bring that um, rain pants yep we'll bring that just in case in the outer pouch and I think that will do it don't feel too heavy but I'll be able to bring some snacks and water pretty easily by using this and here's the rest of the shelter so you got one, two, three, four bunks right there with a ladder platform for eh, two people right there, two people right there. And of course the corrugated steel A-frame roof, keeping it nice and dry in here. Oh, still very hot. That's all right.
just been listening to this snow thaw off of this shelter. Don't let the fall fool you. It's going to swing all the way to potentially high 20s tonight. Today's breakfast choice wasn't my only gamble. I decided to leave a little late from camp to try and time my arrival at the fire tower with sunset. But the storm is also predicted to hit right around four o'clock. Yeah, I should probably get going. Hmm. I'm gonna bring my bag of snacks, maybe a little fuel. We might make some hot coffee at the uh, fire tower. We'll see, bring these gloves. Probably need those. Let's go. We're gonna take this trail. On the last day, we will pass by Stratton Pond and we're gonna take a different trail to get back to the Jeep. That'll take us past Bourne Pond. And here comes the slop again, which I'm actually going to avoid because now I know my poor boots are leaking. Sound of wind in the distance. It could be that approaching storm. I think today has the potential for 20-ish mile per hour winds. And those low temperatures. It's hard to believe it's going to swing all the way into the 20s tonight. Because it feels pretty nice right now. I do believe it's time to restock some water. Not a bad place to do it. But man, look at those clouds. So you can see that storm that's coming for us. Hopefully, it's not gonna hit us too soon, but it feels to me that it looks like it could be before four o'clock. But for now, the task at hand is water. So I'm gonna grab that. This looks like a good spot right here, actually. Just dip that in there, avoid the debris. I'll probably fill my front bottle too. Skies are getting dark. And occasionally I'm hearing what sounds like rain in the distance. Let's get on up here. Let's see if we can't hunker down and ride out whatever storm is coming.
are not quite as peaceful as I may have thought. But this is it. Now the equinox. Down there. Mount Equinox to the west. resort in the distance oh <laughs> well that would explain the wind up here there is a pain missing oh that's creepy that is creepy sounding just think they built this in 1934 I believe the Civilian Conservation Corps, they've built a lot of things trail-wise throughout what are now national forests and national parks. But just imagine, there was a purpose for this tower. You would be stationed here and your job would be to look out on the horizon, not for clouds or dangerous storms. But smoke. Fires. It's probably Stratton Pond right down there. I would imagine. I'm guessing on the other side, Warren Pond is somewhere. But that's us. We are way down there. That is home. quite as idealistic as I pictured. I'm going to have a hot cup of coffee here. Enjoy myself. And uh, I guess it'll be dark by the time we go, but no time to think about that. There we go coffee from a viewer but I think I need some light this is from honey bun and night train they sent me a packet or a package I should say of uh, Maxim coffee it has the creamer included right there I've used this before the yellow one but they sent me the red one and they said they usually do two of these and one of these creamers and um, they say it makes a good cup of coffee. I'm going to try it out right now. <laughs> if the tower doesn't come down. So thank you, Honey Bun and Night Train. Honey Bun is going to do the AT in 2023 northbound. So Honey Bun, when you, <laughs> I'm on the Appalachian Trail right now. When you get here, I hope it's a lot calmer come up here to the top of this and have a cup of coffee and uh, enjoy yourself. So anyway, I'm gonna get the um, coffee going, have a cup of coffee, relax a little bit, and then we'll get out of this tower. And once again, night hike, right on back to Stratton Pond. And I left my stove at the shelter. All right. Great time is over. Goodbye, fire tower. You've been good to me. It's time to go. This fog is making it hard to see, but we're just gonna follow the white blazes and get back to the shelter.
We made it to the taters. We get some rest. And tomorrow, we head for the ponds. All right. Well, it's been coming and going in waves throughout the morning. It is cold. Boots were frozen solid. Um, so it was in the 20s last night, I'd say for sure. Um, at least early morning, I should say, after midnight. Um, it was above freezing the whole hike out. But I got rained on just about that entire hike back down. And there was actually another backpacker here when I got here. He's still sleeping in there, so I'm probably going to pack up uh, quietly. Then we'll probably get on the trail. And unfortunately, I um, could not try the coffee last night, Honey Bun and Night Train. I apologize. I'm going to have to do it on the next trip. I didn't end up having it at the fire tower because <laughs> the stove was down here. I had everything food-wise and fuel, so I thought it'd be a cool idea, but I left my stove down here. So, And then not really going to mess with it for breakfast, even though I would love some caffeine. But um, my pot is over in the bear bin and it is uh, covered in frozen uh, gravy remnants. So I don't really feel like doing dishes. I'll probably just hike that out with me. And I'll have to try the coffee, maybe on a trip with my wife next time. All right. Is frigid. Got ice crystals in my beverage. Uh, my liquid IV is half half frozen IV right now. It's like a tangerine margarita. Mm. Oh. <sighs> Here's the bear bin. Hit that this morning. Actually, I believe I have some. I forgot a bag of trash in there. Yep. There it is. Stratton Pond, Ooh, and it is slippery. It's a big pond. <laughs> I would almost call it a small lake, but let's check it out. Right on the water. We have made it. Finally, you can actually see it in the daylight. Beautiful. Tent site over there. Well, actually that's where the caretaker would stay. And it's like five bucks to stay here or at the uh, shelter up there. Yeah, so we're right here, the star, and we're going to Live Brook Trail and Branch Pond Trail. We'll get us back to that original two and a half miles or so of trail that we took in, uh, the trail that was more of a road. But before that, We'll get some more real trail miles in. Another eight miles today or so. We just gotta kind of meander our way around. Woo! Slippery. Around the pond. See some dark-ish clouds over there. This is all filled in. Lots of beaver activity around here. So we'll see what we come across. And this will also bring us past Bourne Pond. Ugh. Which is 
a nice sight as well. I've eaten all my hot food, so you know what that means. That's typical for me on the last day. Just a few snacks left. And start thinking about where to get that post type cheeseburger. Those clouds are rolling in. That would be my awesome view of Stratton Mountain, which we did yesterday. Probably one of the best views of it. But it just got covered in clouds. That's all right. Lybrook Trail. And there's a Another tent site up there <sighs> that I stayed at many, 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 many years ago. One of my first videos. Pretty cool little clearing there. Oh, got a turn. Five Brook Trail, Horn Pond, and Manchester, which is where the vehicle is. This way. What? in the world it looks like the trail goes right into <laughs> about three feet of water at least uh, okay uh, let me see what I can do here maybe go around this way Oh, wow. That's the trail over there. It looks like the other side of a river, for God's sake. I think this is the area that got hit by a microburst. A huge downdraft of wind in a concentrated area. And it looked even crazier than this when I was here. You know, 2013 or something like that. Looked even crazier. Now it's starting to grow back up a little bit. <sighs> Where do I go? It's cold. I mean, I'm warming up, but I think it's 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 cold outside. Really don't want to go up to my knees in water. <sighs> I'm gonna figure this out, and uh, just gotta do what we gotta do. Maybe we should have went out the same way we came in. Hmm. Yeah, I um. <sighs> can't justify that uh, over by the sign there it looks swollen I mean I can't even tell how deep it is so basically 
I would have to go at least in knee deep water just to get over to the real water crossing. And that looks like a swift current and pretty deep. And it's cold enough right now for uh, snow and hail to be coming down. Whoops. So it sucks, but I think I'm going to backtrack a mile or so to Stratton Pond. And it was a slow mile because of the slippery uh, uh, wooden planks and whatnot and mud. But I just, I can't, uh, that's, that would be the wrong decision. So I'm not going to do it. We're going back. <sighs> I got up early, was making actual good time for a change too. Oh well. That rain all night before it started freezing up. That just really did a number on that crossing. That's all right. We'll get through it. Still covered. I thought maybe a little bonus would be the clouds would magically have disappeared in the last half hour or so, but no. All right, well, get back on it. We just have to go out the same way we came in. I think it was the right decision. That temp is steady dropping. And I'm just plugging away. Haven't made it back to the Jeep Trail Fire Road, whatever you want to call it yet. But we're getting there. Now you were doing a little bit of uphill and I'm still feeling cold, which is what's telling me it's uh it must be dropping. I am um, all the forecast for tonight I won't be out here that's probably a good thing because it's going down into the teens up there and I was pushing the limits last night of my sleeping setup I only have my 40 degree quilt with me <laughs> now I've taken that thing into the 30s before those hammock gear quilts do a good job with that but I was pushing it a little bit and my under quilt was, I think, rated for 30. I think it was mostly just my top quilt. Could have been a little more adequate. Should have brought the 20. But that's all right. There will be plenty of other trips where I can go full winter. I just wanted to get one more trip in with the ultralight setup. But from here on out, I think these trips are going to be big blue my larger backpack and uh, more heavier winter gear I'll tell you what though it was nice to end up using that shelter just a lot easier to pack up stay dry cook all that stuff um, it was pretty fun I never did run into uh, the guy who was there last night he was still sleeping when I left. Anyway, it's like 11 something now. I'm trying to get out at a decent time, so I'm just gonna put an audio book on and put the hammer down on some of these flat and downhill sections. Look at that. 
the sun is finally out. Just in time for my return to the vehicle. Oh well, that's okay. At least I didn't get rained on today at least. But yeah, blue skies, sun's out, and I am hungry. So I think that about does it. I managed to get here, back here by one o'clock even though I <laughs> did a little backtracking today. And I really enjoyed it. So now I'm gonna work on replacing some calories. So thanks everybody for joining me on this one. Thanks to Liquid IV for sponsoring the video, which by the way, uh, if you're looking to get some anyway, use my link with the code Syntax77, get that 25% off or go to Walmart. Um, sponsorship aside, honestly, I think that's gonna be coming on my future trips. Anytime that I felt a little behind on my hydration, I just popped one of those guys and I was feeling good real quick. So let's get this thing off. Till next time, I'm Syntax77 and right now it's cheeseburger time.